Okay, five, four, three, two. It's kind of frozen. One. Okay, got it. Right, we should be live. I, I feel like a bit of a Dalek. Look at that. <laughs> anyway, ladies and it's, gentlemen. Okay, yeah, we're back. Yeah, it's streaming now. Ladies and gentlemen, well, welcome, welcome, welcome to another On the Sofa with Esther, another Tuesday evening where I will be talking to two incredible gentlemen about life, about inspiration, you know, power words of wisdom to navigate us through 2024 or at the start of 2024. They were just sort of praising my glasses and the red lipstick, actually. And I just said, the, the glasses are hiding my baggy eyes and you get distracted by the red so you don't see anything else. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'd like to welcome onto the sofa with me two incredible people. Like I said, they've got some... They've, they've been on a journey in their own distinct ways. So I'd like to welcome Nathan Taylor onto the platform. He's a mental health advocate and we're gonna find out more about him as we go along. And also Shoka, um, he, he's frozen. Shoka, 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 Shoka. Yeah, he's frozen. Um, but welcome Shoka onto the platform. He's a UK rapper, but he's also a mental health advocate amongst other things. So, Whilst we wait for Shaka to come back on, Nathan, thank you so much. Thank you very much for having me. I appreciate being here. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be fun, and but also I know that people are gonna be able to walk away with words of wisdom and get an insight into your journey and why you do what you do. You do very well. Um, so Nathan, in a nutshell, in a peanut shell or a crab shell, who is Nathan <laughs> Taylor? <laughs> Nathan Taylor, um, as you said, I'm a mental health um, advocate. Um, the journey that I'm on at the moment is very much just trying to reach out to, to everybody and just to make mental health, you know, um, more accessible to, to, to everybody um, and not having to feel like you have to hide it. And you can just be yourself, you know, being very honest about what it is you're going through and just getting the right help. Um, for for yourself and you know th this show also is also about um, inspiring people on their journey because you know life can be incredibly challenging especially towards the end of last year there was so much happening around the walls and different mm -hmm. things <laughs> um, what do you do that keeps you topped up in terms of your own personal inspiration um, I just I just keep myself really busy you know I think Beforehand, some years ago, uh, my depression, my anxiety was worse because I wasn't I wasn't doing anything with my life. I was just sitting there, wallowing in self pity. And I think once you do that, it just it just gets worse on a daily basis. So for me, it's just key to to be around the right people, people that are positive, people that are on the same page, people that can always uplift you and give you the right guidance. Uh, and I found that that's very been very therapeutic for me. Um, just surrounding myself around those sort of people and that sort of energy. Excellent, excellent. And I'm going to come back to you in a minute, Nathan, because I want to expand on your story a little bit no. um, because then it will show the journey that you've taken to get to this place of being as positive as you can be, but also you've learned so many tools that have supported you and that continue to support you. So we'll be back with you in a moment. Shaka, welcome, my dear. Welcome, welcome. Now I met this young, I met these these both these um young men last year, and on some level I was impressed. So Shaka, tell us who is Shaka in a nutshell. You look like you're in in space, doesn't he? <laughs> um, but tell us a little bit who is Shaka in a nutshell, in a peanut shell. Or a crab shell. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not. I'm... Um, shocker in a peanut shell. In a nutshell, is someone that is the first person to do something different in his family. And um, once I've made that decision and I followed that path, it now leads me to meet other people. That is the first person, to, first person to do something different in their family too. So no. I don't even need to ask you guys. I just already know because of the path I'm on. And for you to meet me on this path, I already know your stories that like, you're probably the first person to decide to do something like this. Do you Absolutely. know what I mean? So 
um, that's me in a nutshell. I'm just the first person that decided to break the generational curses that we've been under and just do something different and just bring us to a better place. And um, yeah, that just encapsulates my whole journey. Mm. And now what I'm going to do with both of you is just to expand on those journeys so that people can understand how you've got here and, you know, the tools that have supported you to get here. So mm. I'm going to go back to, to Nathan. Now, Nathan, you, you talked about um, where you are now. And I noticed in, on your um, Instagram post, you, you're also part of a group that works out as well, because I do find exercise is so incredibly helpful in terms of, Definitely. you know, mentally, physically, spiritually. But can 100%. you just can you just share a little bit about your journey? You know, you talked about those days of depression and you know wallowing and feeling a victim of. But what was that about? If you don't mind sharing a bit, that's no, that's fine. That's why we're here to educate people. I mean, my my journey kind of started um, when I was a teenager, and you know, I was at a rebellious stage of my life because my father wasn't around. Um, and just, you know, there was several things that were happening in my life at that time that led me to spiral down this, this dangerous path. Um, and I actually ended up going to prison in my early 20s. And when I came out of prison, um, unfortunately, I was around people that were doing drugs. And, you know, that was my coping mechanism at the time. I was very depressed. I was very down. In those days, I wasn't able to work out why I was doing these things. So I just ended up doing, you know, doing drugs. My, my drug of choice was cocaine. And I ended up doing that for many, many, many years, um, up until um, 2012, um, which is when I actually first sat down and, and felt it, it was getting so bad that I needed to do something about it. So between, you know, when I left, um, so when I came out of prison to 2012, it was about, about 15 to 20 years. So it was a long 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 journey of me battling myself you know not being able to face my demons uh, and it wasn't until as I said 2012 going to a rehab which I did for a year and I ended up becoming a, a peer mentor at that sort of like rehab service and that was kind of like when I started to understand myself a bit more when I started to look at why I was doing these things why I was doing the drugs and what I was escaping from and um, you know interestingly um, you know, this this battle still continues to today, you know, even though we're in, a, in a, a new year and I feel like I'm a lot more focused than I was maybe a couple of years ago. It's just understanding that this battle is 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 never going to, you know, it's never going to end. And I have to continually work on myself every day, you know. And as I said earlier, I just put myself around the right energy. People like yourself, people that are doing, you know, great stuff. Thank you. And if I may say, when you said... um something like it's a continual battle, this journey may never end. Maybe even changing the wording around that so you're not claiming it because when you change the mm -hmm. wording around, it's going to usher in a type a slightly different energy around it. That's and true, very true. Yeah, very so true. that's a little tip that I'd like to give you. And mm -hmm. what I'd like to also ask you, that moment, that moment when you realise I need to change, do you, do you remember that moment, Nathan? What did that, what did that feel like? I remember the moment it was because um, I felt like I was going to die at that that moment in time. Um, I'd just been on a bender um, doing drugs and I remember sitting at home and I literally, my heart was beating so fast and so quickly, well, the same, same thing, um, but so hard and so f fast in my chest. I, I honestly felt as though I was going to die. Yeah. And the funny things, it happened... Um, a few times before that where I thought I was going to die but I always managed to you know I got through it and I promised God that I would never do it again but I always did but this time around it just yeah it just there was a, that light bulb moment that eureka moment mm -hmm. that I just felt if I don't do something about it something very tragic is going to happen wow wow okay we're going to continue this as Shocker has disappeared again so we'll, we'll dip into him when he comes back mm -hmm. and you said, what are some of the struggles that you still feel you go through now? What are those, um, Nathan? And I really take my hat off to you because you've, because you've identified that it's a continual thing. And that's what life is, you know. We don't, it's not that we ever reach the place, but we can continue with the awareness of doing things on a daily basis. Definitely. Um, and Definitely. It so what, yeah. So what was the question, sorry? You oh, said. No. So what, what um 
what is it that you sometimes still struggle with? Well, I think the main thing, you know, being in recovery is um, the environments that I choose to be in. Oh, so okay. that's 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 extremely important. So naturally, a lot of the people that I used to hang around with some years ago, I, I don't hang around with because I can't. Okay. Um, and I, I, know, I know a lot of people will say, you know, you have to get to a place where you can be around these people in this, these environments, you know, but I feel as though that's kind of like poking the bear slightly. Um, so the, the kind of space that I'm in, I just have to be mindful of that. I mean, you, you'll probably know um, a year or two ago, I was doing a lot of filming, um, videography, and I was filming a lot of uh, events, sort of like club environments, festivals, that sort of stuff. And it just got to a point where I felt that that environment wasn't conducive with what I was, with what I was trying to do. And I had to take myself away from it. And I, I haven't actually been filming since last year's summer, I believe it is. Um, so that's one of the sort of like things I've put in place just to make sure that I don't put myself in harm's way. Okay, thank you, thank you. And Shoko, welcome back also, ladies and gentlemen. Sorry, my phone keeps logging. I don't know, the reception is terrible, but sorry, but I'm so sorry. No, that's okay, that's okay. Ladies and gents, also just to say that this show is being sponsored by Father to Father. Um, so, yes. So, Shoka, back yeah. to you now. I mean, Nathan's just shared about his journey so that we get an understanding of who you are now and where you are now. So can mm -hmm. you also share a bit about your journey and being in that place where you recognise I am the first, I deserve to be the first? And so share a bit about your journey in terms of how you got here. Um, oh, so the journey started in 2010. So I was in a group. So I'm a, I was originally in a grime group. That's where everyone knows me from around my area and most places. They know me a shocker that I was in the grime group with Marvel. It was three black boys, one African. I mean, one guy named I was Nigerian, another one was Ugandan. Three of us got together and just said, you know, we're going to take over the music industry. And we did. We 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 went on a crazy journey and we did some incredible things. And then in 2010, we signed our record deal. 2011, we ended up getting dropped from that record deal. Then I ended up spiraling into deep depression off the back of that. That was my first time ever facing anything like rejection or um, losing the record deal or something like that. Up until that point, it was just nothing but wins. Do you know what I mean? And... Um, when I say wins, I mean in the sense of like I was like, I'm an only child, so like I got everything I wanted and being spoiled and which doesn't really prepare you for the world. When I was younger, when I was younger, it seemed like the best thing ever, getting all the clothes you wanted and everyone coming to your house to play games and everyone acknowledging that you're the kid that always gets looked after. But when you grow older and you get thrown into the world, you realize that you're not prepared and so certain things that might not hit other people harder hit me harder. Like losing the record is not really a big deal. Now looking back on it, it really isn't. But because I would never had went through anything like that, it hit me 10 times harder than it hit my my other bandmates. They didn't really take it as um, hard as I took it. But um, I think it was an ego problem too because of the sense of like, what do you mean you're dropping me? If you know what I mean. As, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Because I'm so used to like being yeah. the guy. Yeah, yeah being exactly. Yeah. So... So I spiraled into like deep depression off the back of that. Then I ended up getting sectioned and put in a mental health hospital. I had a breakdown. I came home one day, I was screaming, shouting. I bottled in so much during the course of everything I had went through. And it's not like now when I can turn to a friend and be like, this is what I'm going through. And he can understand. At that time, the stigma around speaking was like, if we think it's worse now, it was, ter it was 10 times worse then. And that was 2012. And then I ended up getting, having mm -hmm. a breakdown, being sectioned, put in a mental health hospital for the first time. I got put in St. Anne's. I was there for five days. Then um, I came out of hospital. I tried to get back on my feet, tried to get my bearings back. But the shock of like being sectioned and that whole experience is added trauma on top of what I was going through before. It's not like I came out better. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I was having a conversation about that earlier on in a meeting I had about what is the success rate of people that get sectioned and come out? Are they coming out better or are they coming out worse? Because I came out of even more trauma than I went in with. So wow. I had to deal with that, and then I and ended up being... Sorry pardon? to bring in, but that, that trauma, was that, like you said, having to deal with being sectioned? Yes, the trauma of the whole experience. It's not... I was saying earlier on in the meeting, like, you should be able to differentiate between a mental health ward and a prison. It's not the same thing. Do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Whereas, like, they literally are the same. 
if you go to a prison, you go to a mental health ward, the structure of it, the layout, the way you're treated, it's it's exactly the same thing. And like it shouldn't be like a mental health ward. You should be able to walk in there and tell that this is a place that just the feel of the environment should let you know that this is a place that is conducive for someone's healing. Okay. Where if you don't get that, you still get the kind of feel like you're being punished for something. Mm. If you know what I mean. Like there's no things in place in there to really help you. They kind of just leave you to your own devices. You have a snooker table here and there, which is there, but that's about it. That's the only, and maybe some PCs, I mean, some laptops and PC just laying around for you to browse on the internet, but there's nothing, there's not really like, if you know what I mean, any programs really put in place to really help you while you're there. I had one, they knocked on my door one day and asked me if I want to come to music therapy. And I got so excited because music's how I healed myself. Mm. That's, what I, that's what I use, I'm an artist. So I thought I was going to go into this like experience and I walked into this room and they gave me a laptop and told me to play a song and pass the laptop on to someone else and they can play a song. Yeah. And I thought, I thought, this ain't music therapy. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So that's another thing that needs to be reinvented. That Their whole music... I don't know if it was that ward particularly, particularly, but, like, if that's what their music therapy experience is in different wards, then there's a problem. Because they could have asked me what I think about the song I just played, why I chose it, how it helped me, how does music help? It could have been a really... Do you know what I mean? Deep, therapy session. Yeah, exactly what it's meant to yeah. be called. And um, it was none of that. So, yeah, I had to go through all of those experiences, being section in 2012... Came home, relapsed, got section again. Then I was doing well for like two years and I got section again. So that's three times. First time I got section, I got diagnosed with manic depression. Then the last two times they said, no, it's paranoid schizophrenia because I was exhibiting different have different things like hearing voices and hallucinations. So they was like, no, that's deeper than manic depression. And then the third time my doctor said to me, um, which I've shared so many times, he was like, you've been here for so many times, you need to figure something out. And I was like, he's right, because I can't just picture my life just coming in and out of hospital every year or every two years or something. And then, um, yeah, I was doing incredibly well for like six years. That's a long time. And then my mom passed away in 2022 and um, she had cancer. She passed and that kind of just like just triggered me over the edge. That was my first big loss. First funeral I've ever been to in my whole entire life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I used to, because I know mm-hmm. what I'm like mentally. I really avoid the funerals and I apologize to people and saying I can't come. Because like, I'm a visual person. So, like, it takes a lot for visuals to leave me. Even seeing my mum in her last days, those visuals are there. Do you know what I mean? And I'm trying to dig deeper and find visuals of her when she was healthy. Do you mm. know what I mean? So yeah. it's like, yeah, I'm really, like, I'm very visual. You can tell, like. And um, so I ended up getting section again in 2022, which wasn't too long ago. That was only two years ago. Mm. And then... um. And I built myself back up to this point. I wrote a book, which came out last year. I did a documentary of ITV, Black Boys Can Cry, which is still on ITV now. Um, yeah, I've just been doing incredible things after. Things are just, I feel like that's definitely my mom's got something to do with it because um, I used to complain to her and complain to her about how my music's not working and nothing's working for me. And it's not a coincidence to me that the year she passed, the year after, everything just blew up for me in, in every sense. So, thank you both for sharing thank you I mean they're very powerful sharings and one thing that I've noticed is you both have an awareness of what you are what you can tolerate if I put that in the word so Nathan shares about going into certain environments Mm -hmm. you know he's aware of the environments that he feels comfortable and safe in tolerate it's not the Mm -hmm. same and then also for you Shaka like you say you don't go to funerals because you know you know, you know what's comfortable for you as yeah. well, and there's mm-hmm. no disrespect, and that's really when you're in a place where you can honor from that place of authenticity. Say, this is who I am. This is this this is this is just it. Um, and moving on from that, you know, what were some of the tools that supported you both on this journey? I mean, you've shared a bit before, but what were some? And I mean, you um, Nathan talked about some of the practices that he's done and he's been doing so if you can both elaborate on those tools I know when I interviewed you last year was it last year you spoke about um I think you talked about writing so if you can yeah. both talk a bit more about what were the tools that's really got you where you are that do you want to go first soccer do you want to go first or should I 
Um, yeah, the ca- since the camera's on you, you might as well just take yeah. it away. <laughs> okay. I mean, I, I've been very lucky um, just to have a really good circle of people around me, including my mum, uh, my brother, my brother, my older brother is like my rock. He's someone that I can talk to without judgment. You know, he never points a finger. He just tells me as it is. Um, and I've got, you know, I've got a handful of people. You know, when you're a bit younger, you have a multitude of friends. But as you get older, it, it condenses, right? Mm-hmm. So, you know, the four, the four or five people that I have around me, I can talk to them, you know. But if I feel like I'm having a weak moment and I feel like I might relapse or I might be a bit vulnerable, I don't feel like I'm less of a man to, to if I want to speak to them. And I think that's really important when we're talking about mental health. It's it's being around people that don't make you feel ashamed yeah. to talk about what you are going through, whenever it is, whatever it's about, any time of the day. Um, so that's been an immense help to me, I would say, over the last few years. Brilliant, brilliant. And I love that when you said it, especially, I would say, being a man and maybe being a black man. I mean, you know, men are men to a certain degree, especially mm. if you're going through something. Mm. Um, but being a man and being able to say, this is how I feel to somebody that you trust in your faith is very powerful because those three or four people around you are what tops you up to go out into the world. You know, mm. it's like dog eat dog out here sometimes, trust me. Um, mm. That's why it's good to just have a core because just like me, I've just got a corner. I've whittled it down because there's lots of stuff out there that can, you know. Yeah. And what about you, Shoka? What about you? Yeah, I agree with Nathan. I've got a good support system. My friends never made me feel weird or, do you know what I mean? For when I got section. And I think that's a major part because your friends play, as much as people try to pretend like they're not influenced, but we really are. Yes. And your friends can influence and affect your behaviour. And they just made me feel as normal as possible. And that really helped. Another thing that helped, because I asked myself this question the other day, I was like, what was really the difference that got you to the place that you're at now? And I realised it was information. When they say information changes situations, it's very true. It was information. I learned so much during that period. I read so many good books. Like I always mentioned, the Louise Hay book I read, You Can Hear Your Life. Yes. Um, I read so many good books. I watched so many good videos and like it really did help. The, the, like the the distinctive difference between the shocker in 2012 and the shocker in 2024 is knowledge. I just know more. I know more about myself. I know what my triggers are. Like I mentioned, self-awareness in terms of like um not 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 um going deciding not to go to funerals. There's just so many other triggers I've learned along the way. And obviously I've had multiple breakdowns during that time as well. So I've had a lot of time to reflect on those and see what went wrong, what I was doing. Okay, I wasn't taking medication here. Maybe stay on medication. Do you know what I mean? So there's been a lot of like trial and error during that 2012 to 2024 to get me to this point. So information is the um, is a can, definitely the factor. Can I just add on from that, if I may, just quickly as well? Yeah. Um, I think for me as well, um, I just got to a point where I just I was I was just fed up. I was fed up of just feeling the way that I was. Mm. Uh, and it, you know just waking up every day just feeling down feeling depressed and not doing something about it and I think that was the kick up my you know the yeah. button to make me say do you know what the only person that is going to change what you're going through is you you can't look to, uh, towards other people to help you you've got to make that change yourself so that was um, my catalyst as well that's important that you've mentioned that as well, because I always get a lot of people messaging me to speak to like their family members. And and one thing about mental health, which is a sad fact, is that no one can't do it for you. Yeah, no exactly. one can't go into your mind and do the work for you. It's not like homework where you can just pass your paper to someone else and they can fill it in yeah, and give yeah. it back to you. This one is that you have to do it yourself. So, the, so I feel like it has to be a 50-50 marriage. The person has to yeah. want to change. Yeah, then you can give them the information yeah. for them to apply. But if they're That's not 50 in already, then it's it's pointless. It's hopeless, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Love that. Um, sorry, I was looking at, to see if there's any messages on my phone. And Angel, thank you for watching and listening. Um, and it's interesting because you said a lot of people message you to talk to a family. Now, sometimes it's easier said than done, as we all know, going through, you know, our all, all of our experiences. But also, the, it, like you said, it's key to... Be authentic with yourself. Now, recently I've had um, a situation with two people who are narcissists. And mm-hmm. with a narcissist, is always throwing their garbage at you. 
regardless. And, you know, having the feeling they've got this right to be blah, blah, blah. And it got me thinking there was no level of accountability on, mm. on any level. And the, the, the danger of that also is how it spirals. It's not just themselves that it, it spirals into other places. Yeah. And so what I'm hearing from both of you is this thing about authenticity to self. Because if you can't be authentic to yourself, and you know, sometimes people do think they're being authentic to themselves in that space of disillusion. Mm. But that's what I keep hearing about both of you being authentic to yourselves mm. and then having people around who can be authentic to you and with you as well. That yes. is so important. You know, Definitely. I I usually say to people, you know, because I'm a strong Sagittarian, and I just say, just tell me as just tell me as it is. I've got a strong back, tell me as it is, and I can work through it, with it, on it, because I don't want to remain in a certain place. I'm always one wanting to move forward, wanting to yeah. do and I have a very strong mind because I want to evolve into the best, the best version of, not even the best version of me, the best me. Yeah. The best yeah. me. No, I'm not a version. I am me. And so that's also what I'm hearing from these wonderful conversations. And if... I mean, if someone was feeling stuck and just really trying to get their head around what to do next, I mean, it's different different strokes for different blokes, but what advice could you both give them in terms of where you've been and where you are now? Um, I figured out, I wrote about this in my book, I figured out the three S's that helped me, and I always share this, and whatever people want to take from this, I hope it helps you too. But the three S's that I dealt with that helped me, the first one was self-image. My self-image was messed up. The way I viewed myself was like, and your self-image can get messed up through numerous things. It can, Your self-image can become low through a breakup. You can break, have a horrible breakup, and now you just feel your image of yourself is just down there. Or maybe um, you can be a, a, a drug addiction or alcohol addiction can have you down there. Or um, family members passing. There's so many different ways that our self-images become low. But that's the first thing you need to sort out. The way you view yourself is so important because that's going to dictate how you conduct yourself when you meet people um mm. the insecurity of them of you thinking what they think of you do you know what i mean when they're not even thinking nothing of you that way but because of your self-image you're already <laughs> saying he thinks this so like yeah. getting your self-image right is beautiful and like the best way to get your self-image right is like finding out um I'm I'm a Christian, so like I had to go back to basis and find out what does God think of me. Like I'm I didn't create myself, do you know what I mean? So I needed to know uh actual accurate description of like do you know what I mean? What yeah. is thought of me? And I started reading beautiful things that like you're wonderfully made and like I started and I started taking those things in and those are things that never got said to me. And like I got my self image right. And then the second one I had to get right is self love. Hence why I made the self love song because that all spired, that all started around that time when I was figuring out what self love really is. And um, and then the last one is self acceptance. I had to accept like everything that had happened prior to that point for me to be able to move forward. Because the one thing you don't want is um your mind being able to use your past as a threat to you. Do you know what I mean? So say like I'm trying to make a step forward and my mind starts reminding me, no, but you did this though, but you're this person. And that already happens because you haven't accepted it. Once you've accepted it, your mind can't use that against you because you're going to be like, I've accepted that part of me already. So what are you talking about? So I think those three is what I'll say, like self-image, um, self-love, self-acceptance. If you can get those three right, you should be back on the right course somehow. Brilliant, brilliant. Thank you. And I've got to come back to something you've said there. Nathan, what about you? I think shock has covered quite um a, quite a lot of what I would have said, but um definitely um just the as you said the acknowledgement, just being honest with yourself. I think the long the, the longer you keep lying to yourself, you know life. You know how life is. You you can blink, and it could be two years, three years, four years, and just understanding like how how long how much longer do you want to continue, you know, feeling the way you're feeling um without without resolving the issues, and also just finding someone that you trust. I think for people that suffer with mental health, like myself, you know, there was always that sort of dilemma before I got myself sorted out of who can I talk to? I yeah. felt like I wasn't good enough. I always felt like I wasn't good enough to speak to, in particular, my mum, you know, and my family about what I was going through. So you've always got someone that you can trust. And if not, 
you've always got someone professionally that you can speak to. Um, mm -hmm. and, and and that's important because I'm I'm in counsel I'm doing counseling at the moment. So I'm I'm in doing my sessions um as in I'm seeing somebody. And it's really nice because you're 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 talking to somebody that doesn't know you. They know nothing about you. You don't feel threatened. You don't feel as though they're going to talk about your business to anybody else. It's a very close environment. So if you can't speak to someone you know as a friend, seek help professionally. Mm, brilliant. Brilliant words of advice and wisdom. And Shoko, you talk about self-love. You, you told us about the three S's. Mm. But self-love, what does self-love involve? What, what do you do? Self-love is not taking yourself to fancy restaurants. It is not getting your toes, nails, manicures, back massages. That's part of it. You can do that. That's a good That's a good part. But self-love is how you speak to yourself. Yeah, man. Whoa. <laughs> it's your internal dialogue. That is the real self-love. Because after you get the massages and you go to the fancy restaurant, that conversation that you have with yourself is waiting for you after all of that. It's sitting right there <laughs> like, yep. Enjoy that like ten minutes, and then we're gonna get back to having. We're gonna get back to. <laughs> then we're gonna get back to dealing with this. So you want to get, you want to deal with that conversation you have with yourself and make it as beautiful as possible. And if you, and and you'll know you're loving yourself when that conversation gets more friendlier, because that's a sign that oh I must love myself because now I'm having more friendly and better conversations with myself. That's a sign of self love. Because anyone you do love in your life, how do you talk to them? Yes. You know what I mean, like how do you talk? You don't talk to them like. Do you know what I mean, it's love. So, like, when you get that internal dialogue with yourself, you know, like, you're there. Like, mm. especially when you make a mistake and you're not, like, beating yourself up and taking yourself... Obviously, we do beat ourselves up, but you know what I mean, though? Not to the extreme degree that mm. you normally would. When it gets less and less and you're more, like, consoling yourself, picking yourself back up, like, all right, cool, we can do this again. Then you know, like, all right, cool, yes, I'm in a healthy place with myself because mm. this is how I'm meant to... Do you know what I mean? Interact with myself. And then that that trickles into like all your other relationships. You start having more patience for other people, and you start seeing yourself in them. It just trickles into everything else. Mm, brilliant, like, brilliant. Like, yes, just one more point. Um, so again, adding on from what Shaka said, um, spending time on your own and loving your own company yeah. is extremely important. So mm. a few years ago, I always had to be around people. Always had to be doing something needed company, and. I've got to a, a place in my life where I can be at home. You know, I, I, I work, so Monday to Friday, but I can come home and just be in my own space. Yeah. And love, love being in my own space, That's getting to time. read a book, watch tea, whatever I'm doing, and just enjoy being on my own. And I think that's, that's really good. important. That's a yeah. good sign. A lot of people can't do that. A lot of people struggle to do that. Yeah. And that's where you lose yourself. I mean, I, for years, I've been able to go into places because I've roamed on my own from a child anyway, because I was always sort of out of the box or people thought saw my energy as being different. Um, I was trying to understand what that meant, but I understood what it meant through my experience of what it meant to others. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I like, I roam a lot on my own. There's a piece to that. And, um, and then you find out so much about yourself in that place. And even sometimes when I've roamed with others, it's almost like, I can't do this headache, man. You know, if it's, <laughs> yeah. if, yeah. if it's raining, put on the raincoat. If it stops raining, take off the raincoat. Yeah. If your feet are hurting, I'm, that, I'm a Rottweiler that way, but, you know, I do, <laughs> yeah. I do understand where other people are coming from, but because I'm also very, I'm an empath, so I feel yeah. things deeply. Um. You know, sometimes, and, um, and sorry, I'm, so and I'm choosing, like you both, I'm choosing not to go into certain environments because I can't, my, my my solar plexus can't take it, and I yeah, get exactly. Hit. And it's almost like okay, and I know I we can protect ourselves when we go into certain, but sometimes because the energy out there sometimes is so intense as well, there's no judgment to anybody, but we are, and that's what that's part of self care as well, knowing yeah. how much we can absorb, go into. Um, because, and also what's key about this is that self-awareness, we are choosing, we are yeah. choosing what we want for ourselves. So there's no judgment to going into certain places. If you can, if you can go into that cesspit, that's fine. That's fine. But my, yeah. time, but me, me understanding myself and loving myself means I, I just choose not to, because I know the impact it can have. And yeah. once you know yourself, then 
you did when I went to Barbados, people that said, but Esther, we see you, but we didn't see you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, well, five, ten minutes is enough in this space. I'm I'm gone about my business. And yeah. because there's a freedom to that. There's a freedom because our souls are seeking peace and freedom. Yeah. And and the most people so the most people think about what you just said there is that we are in control. Like yeah. we are in control have around us what the people the things you know anything that's going to cause us stress we don't have to accept it yeah. it doesn't have to be around us you know yeah. and we can do it with grace as well doing it with grace you know sometimes people think well this is just me this is just me well that's fine but we can still do it with grace you know i, I can't be in that just because it's not a judgment but do it with grace as well yeah and i also feel like um it's changing your perspective as well because I feel like the mind is there to it can be our friend it can help us Absolutely. because everything it's alerting us to it's alerting us to that for a reason for our safety know what I mean so people can't stay by themselves because they're scared of that conversation that they're going to have that's why they need to always distract themselves but that conversation is for a reason if you listen to what it's telling you and the memory is showing you and the conversation is asking you and you attend to them and ask them You'll be at peace again, but it's showing you it for a reason. Like oh, it's bringing this up. Hey, hey, deal with this, deal with this, deal with this. Do you know what I mean? But people don't look at it like that. They look at it like it's the enemy. Like, oh my god, it's trying to no. Like, and that's what I realized. I started dealing with everything that it was bringing up. So if I'll go into the mirror and I'll just say like I'm getting ready, and I go look into the mirror to like see what I'm wearing, and I'm like I look really good today, and a voice in my head says, "No, you don't." I'll be like, "Where did that? Why? Where do, do you know what I mean? Like, why? Where did that come from?" Yes. Do you know what I mean? And then I'll dissect it and I'll follow that round and I'll realise it came from when I asked my friend, how am I looking today? And he said, you're not looking too good. And I took that so deeply that now I made it my own every time I get... Do you know what I mean? You've got to trace them back, but people don't do that. And it becomes fun to do that. You start you start wanting to spend time with yourself so um for so much <laughs> just to be able to like figure all these things out. Like... <laughs> Like I'll yeah. be scrolling on my phone on Instagram, and I'll I'll feel I'll be like, why did I just feel that tenseness? And I'll go back up to the post and I'll evaluate it and be like, oh, I get it. I felt that because she's. Do you know what I mean? And you start to you become like a scientist, your own crazy but, scientist in a way. It's mad. I can't. I hope it's making sense what I'm saying. It is. You're in touch with your emotions in real time. Yeah, exactly. exactly. And it doesn't have to be so anal. It doesn't have always have to be so anal. But the thing is. Because you are doing your own introspection, and yeah. be, and sometimes it's it's a quick awareness. Yeah. Or deep. I mean, like you, I could be scrolling through Instagram and stuff, and um, you know, really noticing people's emotions and when they were where they were really at, mm. and mm. the introspection then becomes it's almost like a jigsaw because I can really get in my head because a couple of weeks ago I was in my head, I was getting headaches. <laughs> I have a few people around me. I'm like, listen, I've got a headache. I need to make a decision about this. And I kept going around. Yeah. The and by the main premise that I was able to say to someone, I need, you know, just, just hear me out. But because I was listening to myself, I found the answers. And it's almost like, well, yeah, Esther, you know, in me talking to them, I reveal the answers. And they're Yeah, like, exactly. Yes, yes, yes. Um, you know, there's the answer. And, and I thought, yeah. wow. Well, been around with this for two weeks and yeah you know yeah. um yeah. and so winding down gentlemen you know this has been a great conversation because you know you've been speaking from your place of truth and yes it is about perspective but the key thing is to do your own introspection we don't do yeah. that and we're so caught up in you know sometimes i find myself doing this but i i get up in the morning i have a routine when I pray I meditate and I work out working yeah. out is my go-to place working out if I don't work out I'll be like a mad woman roaming with her <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and so that's my go-to place and I have a sort of strong people who I know are authentic and who they are they are authentic and they're into intentions um I have that around me and you know so I've got my go-to place and you have both shared your go-to place so as we wind down um is there a quote is there something else you'd like to share if you know if people want to talk to you both um you know where can they find you um okay. you can find you want to go next go on go on sorry my apologies go 
No, no, it's all good. Um, they can find me on Instagram, shocker underscore artist. That's the main place. I've got TikTok and Twitter, but um, Instagram's everything. You'll find everything on Instagram. And the quote I want to leave everyone with is, shame dies when your story is told in a safe space. That that helped me so much. Say that again? Shame dies when your story is told in a safe space. Wow. Brilliant. Thank you. Nathan. Okay, guys, you can find me on Instagram and the page is called Mental Health Talk with Nathan. You can find me on there. And I don't have a quote, but what I would say to everyone watching, um, put your phone down. Go on a social media break. Stop looking at what other people are doing and focus on yourself. Work on the inner you and learn to love yourself again. Mm, brilliant, brilliant. And... I just want to say thank you to both of you. And for those who don't know, if you want a safe space, I'm an intuitive healer, intuitive reader. Um, you know, I do a lot of work in the background, work, walking people through their stuff. And it's a safe space to be. So, and I also do deep meditation as well, inner child meditation. And so, you know, also, if you ever want to have a conversation with these gentlemen, you know, it's a safe space as well uh, because they've been there on the in, in different ways. So I'd like to say thank you to both of you for this conversation. Um, and you know, reach out as Donna Ross said, reach out and touch someone's hand. And it's about being the change. We have to be the change. So thank you so much. Thank you for joining me on the sofa with Esther. And next Tuesday, I'm going to have two more guests, and we're going to continue these incredible conversations that will inspire that will encourage and that will support you as we edge into 2024. Thank you, Shoka, and thank you, Nathan. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you. See you later. Bye. 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 And to say this show was sponsored by Father to Father. Thank you. See you later. Bye.